What is up guys? Welcome to my Patreon pick video of the month of November 2021. And this is my top 10 favorite directors. If you're curious what a Patreon pick video is, over on my Patreon page, which is the best and the easiest way to support this channel financially, I have a perk for all of my patrons to where they can vote once a month on a video topic. They love top 10s and rankings. This month, it was top 10 favorite directors. There's also other perks on my Patreon that I try to give. I do exclusive Q and A's. I try to do hangouts once a month. I do uh, Blu-ray digital copy codes. I also do early access videos. Whenever I have a review series, if I get three or four videos done early, I'll go ahead and post some of those videos as viewable just for my patrons until the premiere date on YouTube. So tons of different things that I try to do to give back because Patreon quite literally is what keeps the lights on around here. It's the thing that keeps this channel going. So if you want to consider contributing on that level, my Patreon link is at the bottom of every single video description. Go over, check out the different tiers, the different perks available, and I appreciate your consideration for that. So as far as this video, as far as my top 10 favorite directors, the way that I came up with this list of names is that I looked at which directors have made more of my favorite movies of all time. There are directors on this list that I have not seen every film that they have done. There are directors on this list that I have seen plenty of movies that they have done that I don't particularly care for or just aren't really my type of movie. But that's not really what I'm voting here. I'm not voting on what directors have the most pristine filmography, what director has the least amount of films that I dislike. This is purely the filmmakers that have impacted me as a movie fan the most. So number 10 is Martin Scorsese. Now this is a guy that definitely applies to that side that I said I have not seen all of his movies. This guy has been making movies for decades. He's gone through tons of different genres. The reason why he is on this list for me is namely because of Goodfellas and The Departed, which are two of not only my favorite movies of all time, but certainly my favorite mob movies of all time. I also love Cape Fear, Wolf of Wall Street, Taxi Driver, The Aviator, Shutter Island. This guy has got so many movies that I think are awesome, but really Goodfellas and The Departed are the ones that those are movies that I can watch multiple times a year and never get tired of them. As far as I'm concerned, Goodfellas is the perfect mob movie. There's no movie that will ever top it. And I don't need to even defend why Martin Scorsese is on this list because he's one of the most prestigious directors of all time. Even if you're not a mob person, the guy has gone through so many different genres like Silence and The Gangs of New York or, you know, even if you like kind of the more dramatic version of a mob movie like The Irishman that came out uh, last year. This guy has got a movie for pretty much any type of movie fan. He is a brilliant director, a brilliant storyteller, and easily made my list of top 10. Number nine, I gotta show some love to John Hughes. So many of this guy's movies are amongst my favorites of all time. I mean, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles and Uncle Buck especially are two movies that I can throw on any day of the week and just instantly be comforted. Those are two movies that just make me feel good, that make me feel happy. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world, what I might be going through as a person, where my emotions are. When I start watching Uncle Buck or Planes, Trains, and Automobiles or even a lot of his other movies, I instantly, just, that just washes away and I just feel good and I feel happy and I just enjoy the 90 minutes that I'm about to endure. This guy has given us so many of the classic comedies, so many movies that are in so many other people's yearly rotations. I mean, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, I cannot get through a Thanksgiving without watching that movie at least once. I cannot do it. It's almost like I never even got to Thanksgiving dinner. Like there was no food whatsoever on Thanksgiving if I did not experience planes, trains, and automobiles. And there's very few directors that have a film in their filmography that has that effect on me. John Hughes, absolutely one of the best. Uh, one of the best filmographies as far as just so many movies that are so important, such huge staples in pop culture. Absolutely love this guy. Number eight, we've got John McTiernan. Now you guys know Die Hard's my favorite movie of all time. I had to give this guy a place on this list. He hasn't made as many movies as some of the directors on this list, but he has made a handful of some of my favorite movies, some of the most important movies in the world to me, namely Die Hard. He also did Die Hard with a Vengeance, which to me is easily the best Die Hard sequel. You've got Predator, which is one of the greatest sci-fi action horror movies of all time. God damn, I love Predator so much. That would be almost enough to put him on the list by itself, even if I wasn't a Die Hard, Die Hard fan. Say that 10 times fast. 
You've got movies like Last Action Hero that are such an underrated classic that was just way above its time. Even more modern movies like Basic, not really a big well-known movie, not a movie that pe many people talk about, but I've always thought was a pretty good little uh, military thriller. The guy's just an awesome director, and if nothing else, just because he gave me Die Hard, I had to put him on this list. Number seven is going to be Robert Zemeckis. Now, for a guy that has given us some of the most celebrated movies of all time, I never see his name on a list of best directors or favorite directors or most important directors, and I'm changing that. Robert Zemeckis makes my list at number seven. If nothing else, just because of the Back to the Future trilogy, that's probably my favorite trilogy of all time. I mean, just the first film is in my top five, if not my top ten. But you've also got Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump is just one of the most endlessly rewatchable, one of the most heartfelt, heartwarming movies of all time. Another one that I can watch multiple times a year and never get tired of it. it, it just like John Hughes, that movie instantly puts a smile on my face, instantly makes me happy and makes me comfortable. You even got like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which was this great pop culture thing that I loved as a kid. I wish we could eventually get something in that style again. That would be a great property to go back to in my opinion. Movies like Contact, very underrated sci-fi movie. Flight, one of the more modern ones, one of the better uh, dramatic roles that we've seen Denzel Washington do in quite a long time. And that guy always does great dramatic roles. I mean, this guy just has an awesome filmography, has done so many important movies. Him and Spielberg had a very kind of codependent relationship there for a while where they were really building off of each other's ideas and kind of building themselves up throughout their careers. So Robert Zemeckis belongs on a lot more lists and he's damn sure on mine. Number six is James Cameron, the guy that gave me Terminator. Now Terminator 2 is my second favorite movie of all time and I adore the first one. I really have guilty pleasure with even the other ones in the franchise. So even outside of those two movies, I owe all that to James Cameron, but that's just not where it ends with him. I mean, this guy has done so many awesome best of all time movies. You got True Lies, you even got movies like Avatar that I wouldn't necessarily say is like best of all time, but certainly one of the biggest and most important movies, one of the most uh, landmark movies as far as pushing forward the technology of 3D. This guy's always trying to like push the industry forward with his movies. It's not necessarily this creative thing. I'm going to tell this story, although he's very much that type of filmmaker as well, but he's always trying to do something to set up the next decade or more of how Hollywood makes movies. And he's just an innovator behind the camera. I really wish he wasn't doing nothing but Avatar sequels for the rest of his life, but um, for the movies that he has given us from all of the classic Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, who might be my favorite actor of all time, certainly in the top five. I love this guy's work. I just wish we could get more of it, and that's a good problem to have. Number five, you can't even talk about best directors of all time, favorite directors of all time, without mentioning this guy's name. I don't care who you are. I wouldn't say he's my number one, just for subjective reasons, but there's no way in hell I could do a top five, top 10, top three, without throwing this guy's name in there somewhere in the conversation. And that's, of course, Steven Spielberg. This guy has made probably the most huge, impactful pop culture movies of any other director out there. Like, this is a very subjective list. This is a list of directors that have made the most movies that appeal to me, the most movies that are important to me. But if we were ever to do an objective conversation about best directors of all time, he would easily be the director that you would have the best time arguing that he is number one because this guy gave us like E.T., Jurassic Park, Jaws, movies like Catch Me If You Can that's among my favorites that not a whole lot of people talk about, classics like Hook, Minority Report. He's even done movies that are in very different genres that aren't like these huge pop culture summer blockbuster family films like Saving Private Ryan. He's done Schindler's List. I mean, this is a guy that just has covered so many different genres, has broken the mold and done these things that are just these gigantic pop culture icons of movies with the shark and Jaws, the dinosaurs, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park that this guy is movie making. I mean, you even got Indiana Jones from this guy. I mean, there's so many, it's ridiculous. It's almost unfair how many fucking properties this guy has made that is amongst the most popular properties of all time. Like the only thing that he's missing is Star Wars and he would own the world as far as movie making. So 
Steven Spielberg, he, he's another one of those directors. I have not seen all of his movies. He's got dozens and dozens and dozens. But the ones that I have seen, damn near all of them, are in my favorites of all time. Number four, you've got Quentin Tarantino. Now, this guy just makes movies that I, I really enjoy. I mean, most people do. It's not like I'm unique to that. It's not like this is a hot take, but... The way that he takes the vintage and mixes it with the modern and tells these new stories while very much paying homage to everything that he loved and everything that he has learned from past directors and past filmmakers and past uh, inspirations is always fascinating to see what kind of a, a what kind of things are going to come out of the pot that Quentin Tarantino is cooking in this year because you get movies like the, the lower budget end of him whenever he was first starting off like Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, which is my favorite, going all the way up to more modern movies, these modern epics like Inglorious Bastards, or you get the Western in Django Unchained, you know, even going to a movie that he just came out with, which is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which didn't really, you know, land for me so much. I enjoyed it. It's not certainly one of my favorites of his, but even that kind of pays tribute to Hollywood in itself and, and is talking about a lot of different things that don't have anything to do with, you know, murder and <laughs> crime and all these interplayed stories. He just, he always does something different, something unique. Even when he's doing grindhouse movies, he can't help but make a badass movie that just could never be grindhouse because it's too fucking good. Like this guy, there's nothing else I could say about him. He's one of the most unique, one of the most charismatic, one of the most quirky and, and off-kilter directors you will ever talk about in your life. But every single time this guy comes out with a movie, it's a gigantic event for film fans. And I certainly am one of those people that buys the ticket day one. Number three is gonna be Christopher Nolan. Now, admittedly, he's getting a little bit too high concept for me here lately, but I feel like eventually he's going to scale back. But with that being said, Christopher Nolan is probably the most visionary director out there working today. I mean, this guy just always goes for broke. He shoots for the stars with every single movie that he does, with every concept that he tackles. Whether or not he reaches the stars every single time is just a, a subjective opinion. I'm sure my buddy Brian Lomax would say he exceeds his reach past the stars every single movie, but for me, just the fact that he always goes for broke, that he always has that ambition, that he's always trying to outdo what he did the last time, which seemed like this monumental task the last time that he did it, I will always respect this guy. But he gave us the Dark Knight trilogy, he gave us these great thrillers like Insomnia and Memento, he's gone bonkers and given us things like Interstellar and Tenet here recently, and movies like Inception is just one of the most perfectly crafted, mind-bending experiences that I've ever had in my life that is an endlessly rewatchable movie for me. There's nothing else I can say about this guy. I mean, the, the last couple of movies that he's done have not reached the level of awesomeness of some of his previous work, just for me personally, but he always tries to outdo himself. He always tries to give this amazing product with all these wild concepts that's realized in an amazing way on screen. And just the fact that he never gets tired of trying it, that in of itself is enough respect for me, but he has made some of the best movies of all time, so he's easily on this list. Number two is gonna be David Fincher. Now, this is a guy that just really tends to make movies that go on my wavelength. Now, he's certainly tried different genres. He's done things like Benjamin Button. He's done things like Mank here recently that aren't necessarily for me, but when you talk about movies like Seven, like Fight Club, like Panic Room, I mean, this guy just takes these dark thriller concepts and visualize him in this beautifully grotesque way with the way that he moves the camera, with the way that the, the color grades that he uses, it always has like this green kind of color to it in certain aspects. And the way that he tells stories in such an unsuspecting way to where even something as simple and almost cliche as the setup of Seven. Old detective on his way out of the force, new cocky detective coming in to replace him. They're doing one last case together. Just that tried and true formula goes in wildly different directions underneath the guise of David Fincher. Movies like Fight Club, that's just a mind-bending experience and has totally penetrated pop culture for decades now. Things like Gone Girl. Gone Girl was a novel that, you know, made a lot of headway whenever it first came out on like the New York Times bestsellers and everything. And then you see that David Fincher is bringing this book to life on screen. And as somebody that doesn't read a whole lot of books, you're like, why is he doing this movie? That's interesting. He usually does 
really dark and really mind-bending things what's 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 so mind-bending about this and then you watch the movie and you're like nobody but david fincher could realize this story the way that he did so i love this guy one of my favorite directors obviously being on this list and he's another one like quentin tarantino every single time he comes out with a movie i'm there day one but number one for me and this of all of these is a definitive placement as my number one is john carpenter now this guy is on the horror directors mount rushmore he always will be but He's one of those guys that has such a distinct style and always executes it in such a very simplistic, subtle way that he's never like larger than life on screen. He's never somebody that is going for these huge monstrous concepts. He's always got this simple idea like a guy in a mask going around killing babysitters or like a car that's evil, but he realizes it in such a fun way, in such a creepy way, in such an effective way that every single time, especially in his older filmography, that he does that, it's always this iconic movie, whether it's a cult classic or just a general classic like Halloween. And he's given us some of the most important movies of all time. I mean, like I said, Halloween, I'm not as high on it as everybody else seems to be, but it's still a bona fide classic. It's still a movie that is in my top 50 horror films easily. And for me, movies like The Thing is what really stands out as his best work. You got movies like Christine that I have always grown up and always rewatched and always loved. And he always compliments his movies with his own score that's almost more iconic than the movie itself. Even more underknown things like Vampires I love, In the Mouth of Madness is a fantastic horror film to me. He hasn't done a whole lot directing in a long time. His last couple of movies certainly did not reach the... Uh, reception of his earlier work but just for what he gave us in the 70s and the 80s alone john carpenter has made a gigantic stamp on film and a gigantic stamp on the heart of horror fans like myself that i, I can't help but absolutely love everything that he gave us and continue to marvel at it today. So he is my number one. So what do you guys think? What is your top 10 favorite directors? Let me know your list down below. Also let me know your favorite film by those directors. That'll be an interesting conversation. Thank you guys for watching as always and please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button if you like rankings like these. I've done a lot of director rankings where I rank all of their filmographies. At some point this year, I do want to do a John Carpenter ranking. There's like maybe two movies of his that I still haven't seen and uh, that's something I will do for sure in 2022. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to consider contributing to this channel on a financial level, please check out my Patreon link down below and you can help participate in polls to get videos like this made every single month. Thank you guys once again for watching and as always remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.